Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we're using StreamYard right now and uh, taking a bit of time for me to get used to this, but it's allowing us to go live on more and more platforms. If you're watching us here on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page, thank you for joining us on our X channel, uh, Israeli News Live at Stephen Denon, using my pen name there. I want to welcome you for watching there and, of course, on our YouTube channel, Israeli News Live. Uh, it's an exciting time, but yet a dreadful time as well. As those of you already can see, uh, it is horrifying uh, to see right now the size of the hurricanes that are starting to happen. Uh, this is Hurricane Melissa. It made landfall with 185 mile per hour winds, category five. It is being considered the strongest hurricane of the Atlantic thus far. And that eye wall is just unbelievable. The air floor uh, here in this video here uh, seen flying into the eye wall. It is massive, to say the least. And the height of this eye wall is unprecedented. Those of you that will recall, you've been listening to us for many, many years. You know, I put, I think, in the uh, in the description here about three years ago. It's probably been about four years ago. I talked about uh, from Intel reports here that we were going to be seeing, uh, one, they would have to, we'd start seeing hurricanes so massive, they would have to change them from the name of hurricanes to mega canes or hyper canes, I think was another word that was used. And then also, too, I was told that we would start seeing inline storms here in the United States with upwards to 110 mile per hour winds or higher. I actually was in one of those storms down in northwest Florida, and it snapped telephone poles for several miles, just snapped them in half like butter. Uh, something you don't even see in hurricanes very frequently. Normally tornadoes or something do that, but the winds were well over 100 miles an hour, just straight line winds out of nowhere from the storm that hit that area. And now we're seeing as Hurricane uh, Melissa came on board in Jamaica, and they're saying that this hurricane is going to rapidly intensify uh, once it comes off this island here. Some of the uh, video footage here uh, that people are posting online, just to kind of give you an idea, the floodwaters from the storm surge coming in, just unprecedented. Uh, I remember in Pensacola, Florida years ago, the storm surge was so high, I think they estimated when Hurricane Ivan came through close to, uh, I think some people estimated around 20 foot storm surge. A friend of mine that lives there near scenic uh, uh, hills there said the water came all the way up nearly to the road. It literally washed out the interstate bridge at that time. One man was killed trying to cross uh, in his 18 wheeler during those days there. Very, very tragic situation that happened. Uh, and this was the aftermath right here of that storm there. Uh, Melissa, Hurricane Melissa, as it came uh, ashore there, you see the one little boat there. I remember uh, back years ago during, uh, um, oh gosh, what was that? Back in the 60s, I think it was 1969, Hurricane Camille that came on shore uh, the coast of uh, Mississippi, Alabama at the time. And uh, it was just catastrophic, I think 200 mile per hour winds. So, but this is supposed to become a common theme. And uh, so I just wanted to share some of that footage with you there. Another thing I want to share with you too, that's very disturbing is, uh, and this is posted by Dan, uh, Diana uh, Panchinko there. Uh, this is what Zelensky is doing, by the way, uh, to their citizens. They don't have any fighters anymore. So what they're doing is they're just kidnapping people off the street. Uh, this lady looks like her husband is being dragged away as they hold her, hold his wife back so she does not help rescue him from them. Uh, and they will end up dragging this man off, putting him on the front lines where, from what I've been told, they only have about uh, 48 hours that they will survive. Uh, they will be killed by the Russians. So uh, it's just a very sad situation there. That's all they do. They drop them off with an AK-47 from what I've been told. And this is from friends of mine inside of Ukraine. 
that have shared these horrifying stories that do happen, uh, and they just drop them off on the front lines, and then they die. Uh, there's just nothing that can be done there. So just very, very sad. Another very, you know, heart-wrenching story. We keep seeing these, uh, these stories here, uh, you know, ICE and some of the things that ICE is doing. And, uh, you know, I, I realize that they're trying to get, they want to get illegals out of the country here. Uh, and, but is the way they go about it though, to me is extremely uh, uh, irate. And it's very sad. This young man here, 16 years old, American citizen arrested by ICE, has uh, bad injuries to his neck, his spinal cord, after he was trying to go to school that day and they were uh, taken into custody by ICE, uh, later released. He was not uh, an illegal whatsoever. I don't know about his dad or anything, but just the brutality that they're doing uh, against uh, uh, and many times American citizens. You have an American citizen right there, 16 year old young man, American citizen, uh, wrongly arrested. Uh, so this is happening over and over and over, and there is no apology, there is no justice, there is no, uh, there is no due process whatsoever for people. I support what George W. Bush said, or just even George Bush said, not George W., but George Bush said about his immigration policy ideas. Is that uh, he said he said one Trump needs to get rid of the fanfare, and he said, but uh, look, give the people a chance to become American citizens if they you know do a background check, make sure they're legal. And, uh, you know, let's do it that way there. But he totally disagrees with the current policy of the Trump administration. Uh, and I agree with him wholeheartedly on that. But sadly enough, uh, I'm afraid those things are just not going to change there. So at any rate, though, Hurricane, uh, Hurricane Melissa is expected to go back. And they're saying it's going to rapidly intensify after it leaves Jamaica. Uh, that, if that be the case... United States, beware! I don't. I've not looked at the the path trajectory of this powerful storm right here. But look at that! My gosh, the blackness! It's like death, staring death right in the face. I remember when I saw the images of Ivan. I lived in Israel at the time, uh, and it looked like the face of a one-eyed demon, is what it looked like. Um, and this one here doesn't look much more prettier there. So I can only imagine Floridians and whoever, wherever this thing ends up going there, beware. This storm is probably going to do some very serious damage. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, don't forget to, by the way, uh, Substack. My wife's channel, Yana Benoon, uh, is on Substack. Yana, it says Substack.com at Yana Satova, S-U-T-O-O-V-A. Uh, of course, my wife goes by her married name as well, but on the, uh, under the actual link there, it's Yana, uh, excuse me, substack.com at Yana Satova. And uh, she's did a very, very powerful article here. Very, uh, very much a, a very deep and personal uh, message that she shared here about our family. Uh, this one is one of the ones that is uh, for paid subscribers only. Uh, and uh, it, it is very personal. And, uh, and I, I commend her for her amazing ability to write and sharing these things with you guys so you can understand just the, the, the difficult times that we went through in life and how we overcame those difficult times there from uh, the tragedy of her father being murdered uh, to the changes of life, both of us. Uh, my wife, I wish she went through the menopause and uh, myself, Andrew Paws, and then having to deal with what it's like with these changes in our body and how we overcame those uh, adversities. But uh, if you subscribe, uh, you you'll definitely would not regret it. She goes in also to the, uh, as well to uh, a lot of articles on the Noahide laws. Uh, this is the very thing I believe personally that cost my father-in-law his life. They were targeting my wife specifically. Uh, we were all uh, poisoned uh, by uh, Carrie Madej with 21 mils of peroxide. It was determined to be a homicide by two pathologists. Uh, and that's still ongoing, though. Uh, uh, we did win the civil case, but it's still not over yet. Still being investigated to this very day there. So uh, she'll be sharing more things there on her Substack. So subscribe to her, substack.com. 
at Yana Satova. I'll put that link in the description here for you after this video loads up. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you have been following closely our information on Charlie Kirk. Uh, and you know, I don't, I don't want to say I apologize for doing so many videos on this, but uh, like so many others, like Colin with Project Constitution and uh, and Ty Norman uh, with uh, We Are Not Going to Mars, and many, many others there uh, who have worked tirelessly to try to get answers like Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson, Megyn Kelly, so many that want answers to what happened to this young man. Uh, recently, I did another video on that very issue there on our YouTube channel, um, and I'll just quickly share that with you here so you can see that. Uh, Candace again, Charlie ripped a hole in reality. I'll uh, have to take a look at that as well. I would follow Candace. Um, maybe there's a lot of people that don't, well, I shouldn't say, I see a lot of people that don't really care for Candace, and I, I don't know why. I, everything I've listened to her about, she's very candid, she's very forthright, and uh, and the young lady was a very close friend of Charlie, so I think she has a right to speak about what she's speaking about there. Uh, but as we take a look here on our channel here, um, we did, um, I did this video here, the laser nobody saw at Kirk event. I think this is important, not just because I believe uh, the person that used this laser was being used as a spotter, probably unbeknownst to him what the real agenda was. Uh, that's something that I allege. I, I cannot prove it 100%, uh, but I believe it has a lot to do with it. Also, I deal with this issue about uh, his shirt. I want to show you some of this real quick, too, because I just saw on uh, on another X channel there, uh, Jason had put out a new video, and let me see if I can find that real quick. Um, oh, gosh. Let me see here. Um, let's see. We want... Uh, oh, gosh. Let me, let me just see if I can... All right, that's what I'm trying to do is get to crowdsource uh, channel there. And listen, you know, people that go to beating up on people, please don't do that. Uh, that that's just so rude. Uh, I, I don't know why people would even think about doing things like this. This is absolutely atrocious uh, in my view what happens here. Uh, you know, the, the, the man's a Jewish guy, uh, and uh, I appreciate his candor and his stance there. You know, and then people just, they just go attack the guy. I think that's totally wrong uh, of people to do. Um, you know, he asked, actually asked me not to say anything about that. Maybe I shouldn't, but, you know, I just, I find it appalling uh, when he's trying his best to try to be um, uh, more candid with us here and sharing some things with us there. I was hoping to find, though, there was one video that he had put out there that was very, very interesting. I can't find it right now. It's mainly, though, I'll just say this here. What it is, is Charlie's shirt, um, when when he is actually shot, we notice that the shirt pulls really tight, goes up. You've got this pocket in behind there. It looks like a pocket of air almost. There are two things that create that, and I talk about it in this video right here, two things that cause that issue to happen. One of those things, by the way, uh, and let me just see, maybe it's further in the video where I talk about that. I think it is back in this area here. One of the things that causes that, like his shirt pushes up, uh, his letter is going a big U shape. You'll notice all that motion is going up towards the wound on Charlie. Why is that? A high velocity round traveling over about 1,300 feet a second causes such a vacuum uh, and as it rips through the tissue, and I hate using that for so many people that have suffered with this, but as it does that, it creates a vacuum on the exit of the wound. Between that and his muscle reflection and everything, and what that does is that vacuum literally pulls this massive air pocket comes out. That's why you see his shirt on this side here puff out, pulling it tight in the front, poofing it in the back, and on the side right there, that is all from that high velocity uh, exiting wound. In fact, that's a proof that the wound is an exit wound. Is another clear proof. It's the vacuum pressure of that 
bullet coming out the other side. I think that's an important thing that a lot of people have totally left out. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking to you guys again soon.